The 805 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome everyone to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Kira Redman, and Kira is Executive Director of Channel Keeper. Welcome, Kira. Thanks for having me, Cinder. Thanks for being here. Golly, your organization is doing so many important things in our community that impacts a lot of people. And so I know the audience would love to hear more about that. Sure, so Channel Keeper's mission is to protect and restore the Santa Barbara Channel and its watersheds. And we do that through science-based advocacy, education, mm -hmm. field work, and enforcement. Field work and enforcement. Okay, so yeah, let's talk about all four of those. Where do you <laughs> want to start? <laughs> okay, well I like to start at education because okay. that's obviously the, the first place we have to start with environmental issues, just educating the general community about what pollution problems are facing our local waterways, educating policymakers about potential policy solutions to those problems, and then um, educating young people in particular. Mm. So we have a, a real strong youth education program where we're working with a lot of other partners and local schools oh, to get good. kids out on the water on our boat, out in field trips where they're doing beach cleanups and studying creek bank ecology and learning about watersheds and pollution prevention and how they can be a part of the solution. That's really important to teach them at such a young age. Very much so and they're they're really the the age groups that we work with are are very impressionable and open to mm -hmm. these to environmental concepts and I think more than ever we're seeing a real eagerness and oh, that's good. motivation to get involved and make a difference. Um, it's really inspiring. So you say you have boats? We have a boat, the channel keep, the RV Channel Keeper, the research <laughs> vessel Channel Keeper. Uh, it's birthed at Marina 4 in the Santa Barbara Harbor. Okay. And this is actually a, a requirement of being a water keeper. So oh. Santa Barbara Channel Keeper is one of what are now 350 water keeper organizations all over the globe. Golly. And one of our requirements is that we have a boat to patrol and protect our local water body. And so we have the the RV Channel Keeper, it's a 31-foot former lobster fishing boat, and we use that for a number of different purposes, including getting kids out on the water mm. to learn about the marine environment firsthand, um, but also to monitor um, water quality. We're helping researchers at UCSB monitor how ocean acidification Gosh. is happening in the channel. We work with others to monitor marine protected areas mm -hmm. in the channel here along the coast and out at the islands to see how these areas are helping to bring back fish populations and how people are using these areas and whether they're complying with the, the no fishing regulations as well. Wow, that's I had no idea that you folks were doing that. That's yes, we pretty, are. pretty darn exciting. So talking about, it is really exciting and it really is what I think one of the things that sets Channel Keeper apart from other groups is our on the water presence. And that brings me to the second pillar of our mission statement, which is field work. So, um, we, like I said, are out on our boat doing a lot of monitoring of water quality and the health of our marine habitats, but we're also out in our creeks and on our beaches testing water quality to make sure it's safe for wildlife as well as for human mm -hmm. recreation at the beach. So surfers and other ocean users know when the water is too polluted that they might get sick, um, mm -hmm. sharing that information with the public right away so that they can make informed decisions about recreating at the beach. And then, you know, we have a really robust creek monitoring program that engages volunteers um, on a monthly basis. We test water quality at, I think, 45 different sampling sites all over the South Coast wow. with the help of um, hundreds of volunteers. So it's really, um, it's a great way to get people familiar with their own watershed in their own backyard, mm. while also helping us collect really actually scientifically robust data that then we use to inform the policymaking process. Wow. How many volunteers do you use in any given month or So year? we've been around, actually Channel Keeper is celebrating our 20th anniversary this year. 20 and we've years. engaged 
almost um, 4,500 volunteers over the Gosh. years. And that one specific um, stream team program that I mentioned, that's the one that engages probably the most volunteers. Um, that and beach cleanups, which I also wanted to mention. Um, stream team, the water, the stream testing program has engaged 1,500 volunteers over the last 20 years just by itself. You know, and so people are, they moved to Santa Barbara because they were attracted to the beauty and the ocean and all that. And so how cool it is that there's a way for them to get involved as a volunteer to help protect that ocean that they love so much. Exactly, and to learn more about what is impairing it. Um, you know, a lot of people don't understand why there's a warning sign at the beach sometimes that it's the water's too polluted to go swimming, and why is that? So in addition to helping volunteers, having volunteers help us collect the data itself, we also sort of train and educate our volunteers about, you know, the different land uses in the watershed that create or cause different types of pollutants to become mm. a problem, and also what they can do to be a part of the solution. That's great. So. So if somebody said, well, Kira, how, do, how does the ocean get polluted anyway? And what can we do to help um, change that? What mm -hmm. would you say, kind of in a nutshell to them? Well, I think the number one source of pollution here in Santa Barbara and many other urbanized areas is urban runoff. Um, mm -hmm. So basically polluted runoff. And that comes from any number of sources, um, from you know not picking up your dog waste to oh using too many pesticides oh, or gosh. fertilizers in your yard to um, you know, changing your oil on your driveway without a pan underneath it. it really simple things that mm -hmm. you know, if you're not aware, you might not necessarily know, but there are a lot of simple things that people can do to be a part of the solution to pollution. Another big problem that we're facing here and worldwide in terms of water quality and, and pollution is plastic. Oh, so yes. single-use plastic has been, it's literally choking our oceans, and it's, yeah. it's a crisis of, of global proportions. And really, um, it's bad everywhere, and you've probably heard about the, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Where yes, I mean, the, yes. the world, the, the scientists are predicting there's going to be more plastic in the ocean than fish in, oh, gosh. in the not-too-distant future. So um, advocating for policies like the single-use um, plastic bag bans, the plastic straw bans, the styrofoam bans. Channel Keeper has been at the forefront of those advocating for those great. local level laws to really phase out these single use plastic items that we don't need, while also educating our community and young people in particular mm -hmm. about alternatives. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, you know, we don't need plastic straws. We don't need plastic bags. We can live without them. And right. our oceans certainly need to live without them. Yes. Gosh, that's such important work that you're doing with that. Thank you. And let's see, one, two, three pillars. Is Enforcement. There so Enforcement. this is another one that I think you know kind of makes Channel Keeper unique from other environmental groups. Is we do use the Clean Water Act and other environmental laws very judiciously and very occasionally, but we do use them to get environmental improvements when advocacy and outreach and communication and education have not yielded significant results and we still have pollution problems. So for example, we've, like I said, we've been around for 20 years. We've only filed, I think, 14 lawsuits in those 20 years and all for very important and egregious pollution problems that really advocating the right, you know, advocating for change didn't get the job done. And so we did use the citizen suit provision of the Clean Water Act and other environmental laws that we have that allow citizens, private mm -hmm. citizens, or groups that represent private citizens to take enforcement into their own hands when the government is turning a blind eye or violating the law themselves. And so one example wow. is our um, lawsuit against the city of Santa Barbara for sewage spills. Mm. Um, we had lobbied the city council for more than 10 years to fix the problem, really because they weren't investing enough money in upgrading their sewer pipes. And so we were having sewer spills, raw oh sewage spills all over Santa Barbara that were running off into storm drains that lead to the beach and causing the beach to have high levels of bacteria and people getting sick. And it, it was Our just- very own city council. It's terrible, Gee, it was whiz. terrible. And so again, the lobbying, the advocacy wasn't getting the results that we needed. We had the highest rate of sewage spills of any 
similarly sized city on the entire central coast. Mm. And we said that's that's not acceptable, especially for a town like Santa Barbara, mm -hmm. but really anywhere. And so we did file a lawsuit under the Clean Water Act and we got down to negotiating with the city and hammered out a settlement agreement that lasted eight years. It actually ends um, later this year. And that settlement agreement required the city of Santa Barbara to spend an additional $20 million wow. beyond what they would have spent mm -hmm. to repair 35 miles of sewer pipe. And that's 13% that's of their entire system, repair or replace it. And as a result, sewage spills have come down by 91%. Gee whiz. So these kind of you know, litigation, it's, it's not our preferred way of doing mm -hmm. things. Sure. It's, it's expensive to us and to the city and ratepayers, but mm -hmm. it needed to get done. And it had a huge impact. And now we don't see warning signs at the beach and sewage, raw sewage Golly. flowing out of manholes like we used to. So it That's really, amazing. I bet not many people know about that. I think you're right. I mean, it was probably in the paper, I suppose. I don't remember yeah. reading it, but gee whiz. Yeah, it's a really big deal. And we're really yeah. proud of that. So you do a lot of collaboration with all kinds of organizations mm -hmm. and schools and all of that. Yeah, we've That's worked really with, I mean, there's so many great organizations in, in Santa Barbara. We've worked really closely with the Community Environmental Council mm -hmm. on all the single-use plastic stuff. Mm -hmm. um, we Our youth education programs are partnerships with the Santa Barbara Museum of Natural History and Explore Ecology and lots of local schools, the Maritime Museum, the, oh, the I was Sea Center. Ask about the Maritime. Yeah. And, you know, we're just a one one person education staff, but we reach upwards of 2,000 kids a year with our environmental education programs, and that's because we're maximizing our impact by partnering with other groups. Wow. Um, we also work really closely with the Environmental Defense Center on, you know, some of our oil related advocacy or some of our stormwater urban runoff enforcement cases. Right now, we're partnering with EDC on a lawsuit against um, two federal agencies for allowing um, fracking from offshore platforms without first looking at what the potential environmental impacts and impacts on endangered species could be. So we were still in, involved in the litigation, but um, the court did side with us in the initial stages and ordered a moratorium on any new permits for mm -hmm. fracking from offshore platforms while this um, analysis Gosh. of potential impacts could be done. We are all so lucky to have you folks monitoring all that. Thank you. It, we love it. It's our job and we're, we're yeah, good at it and we well. enjoy yeah. it. <laughs> God. So um, Channel Keeper is a nonprofit, 501c3, right? Absolutely. I know that your website is on the bottom of the screen here. And uh, so people can probably go to the website and find a Donate Now button. They sure can. And uh, they can find out more about how to be a volunteer mm -hmm. and what kind of services you offer. Absolutely. And we also have lots of events. Um, every oh. year we have our annual um, Blue Water Ball fundraising event, which is usually heard in, about in the that. spring. Um, and this year will be extra special because we're celebrating our 20th of anniversary. Course, your 20th. So making waves for two decades. We've been uh, really happy to be a part of this community for 20 years and we're excited to celebrate with all the organizations and people who have made our work possible. Um, we're so grateful to be able to do the work that we do and um, to be supported by our community and we're looking forward to another 20, 40, 60, 100 years of yeah. environmental impact moving forward. What a success story. Thank you. And thank you for your leadership in that in this important area. Oh yeah, I, it's my passion. I've actually been at the helm of Channel Keeper for almost 16 years now. So 16 years? Yeah. Yep. Golly, Kara, I had no idea you. Were yeah. Were there that long? Yeah. I'm Gee. still loving going to work every day. So. Well, that's the important thing. Yeah. I mean, it's really in today's day and age, it's so important for everybody to make a difference yeah. because look at the state of our environment yeah. and the state of our planet. And, you know, I, I am encouraged. I mean, th things are dire. You know, climate change is mm -hmm. literally wreaking havoc on our planet. But I do see a lot more people sort of activated and mobilized and yeah. eager to get engaged and make a difference. Um, hopefully that'll show up in the polling this yeah. in the, oh, the ballot gosh. box yeah. this November. But um, yeah, I'm encouraged. I think that, good. yeah, that things are moving in the right direction. I'm glad to hear that. Well, thank you for all your important work and for being with us today. Thanks for having really me, Cinder. appreciate it. And thank you for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time.